Sorry, not sure what happened there. Welcome to Let's Talk Tottenham. A wonderful weekend, 2 0 against Chelsea, sticking them in even more in the doldrums than they were already. We've, well, I'll say cemented top four place, but we're cemented into the top four race. Uh, Newcastle losing in the cup. What could be better? What could be better? Joined by two great guests, not been on here for a while. So, welcome back to both of them. Mark, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Always better after beating them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, we haven't been in a while. That. Yeah, yeah, certainly at home. I didn't realise that before yesterday uh, we hadn't scored against them at the new home. And uh, Tommy, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. And that's exactly why. I, I didn't know it was that long. I didn't know we haven't even scored yeah. against them at home for five years. So, yeah, it's uh, nice to pick up the three points, finally. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was a real, real banana skin. Yeah. I thought it would be, let's give Ch- Dr. Tottenham turn up and give them their little boost to get their season back on track, but not a bit of it, not a bit of it. We lost, to, we lost them four times last year, didn't we? Four times. <laughs> not just lost, either battered, uh, yeah, man, at least yeah. a couple of them anyway. Uh, please, if, if you're watching, thanks so much for watching. Get your comments in. Uh, please hit the like and the subscribe as well. You know Tommy from the Hotspur Hoods. Make sure you jump over to his channel as well and hit the like and subscribe there. He'll let you know at the end uh, what you can expect on the channel. Uh, but firstly, Mark, important win for the top four race. I think it's fairly safe to say that Man- uh, Manchester City or Arsenal, unfortunately, are going to be winning the league. Maybe if they have a bit of an off period, Man United can get in. But I don't think we're anywhere near that 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 level. But top four, bang in that race. You'd rather, with four points ahead of Newcastle. They've got two games in hand, but you'd rather have the points. Uh, so yesterday... I'm not saying it's a statement win because Chelsea are, are fairly poor at the moment, but it's a game that, like we've just alluded to, that we haven't won or scored in for five games. Uh, so it was a big win uh, for us yesterday. Yeah, and you can call it a statement win in the, in the regards to no matter how crap they are, they always turn up against us. You know, even when the you know back from the, when the Premier League was formed, they would always turn us over before the Premier League was formed. Uh, what was it? When we beat them the other year at Sanford Bridge under Pochettino, before that, we hadn't won since Gary Lineker played for us. So that's how long ago it was. So, you know, when we, whenever we play them, I mean, I'm one of these saddos. Every time we beat, like West Ham, I've spent my whole week watching West Ham YouTube just to, like, suck up their tears. So I've been watching Chelsea all day. And they regard it, we all know, they regard it as their biggest game of the season, you know. So, we're their biggest rivals. So, to turn them over is a big statement. Whatever way you look at it, um, whether that get, is good enough to get us in the top four, um, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? But we're, we're up there and we're battling it out. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm over the moon, mate. Two London Derby wins back-to-back, two clean sheets. Happy days. Yeah. And Tommy, two... Oh... Very comfortable wins. I said to my dad after the West Ham, I don't think we'll have a better, a, a more comfortable game this season. I'm not really sure now which one was more comfortable, Chelsea or West Ham. A lot of good, intricate play by them, but no one had put the ball in the back of the net. And really, they didn't really look like scoring. So it was, it was fairly easy for us in the end. Uh, were you surprised by that? Did you think they'd put up more of a fight? And West Ham as well. There were no 50-50s from them crunching in, which you'd expect in a London derby. Were, were you surprised with the two? games how comfortable we looked in it or how comfortable we were allowed to be it's it's always i suppose it's always tricky when you've got a team that are not doing well because you could be the law of averages dictate that you could be the team that they start you know they beat and then start recapturing their form so and the fact that both are you know london derbies is always tricky uh west ham you should you should be beating comfortably to see 18th in the league you know <laughs> they're, in a, they're in a massive relegation battle they're going to do well to stay up having seen them you know, last week, and they're going to do well. So I say that they've beaten on for us four nil. Um, but uh, yeah, this it could it, things can always turn for a team, and and, and a lot of the time we're the t- we're the team that they beat for for the yeah. form to turn. But it wasn't it wasn't the case. And the same with Chelsea. You know, I think they were tenth when we beat them. They might be eleventh now, and that is that's the re- it was all it was clear to see they didn't have a number nine for yeah. some reason. They've gone with Averts at the start of the season <laughs> and Obenia. No, they've spent all that money. <laughs> they've spent three or four hundred million pounds in the summer. £200 million in the winter and haven't signed the number nine. It's incredible. Yeah. Not just that, Tommy. They've got a number nine in Inter Milan. Yeah, <laughs> I like suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've, they've had him three times and he still hasn't been able to score five goals. But uh, yeah, they, they've still got that boy. He's struggling. He's struggling for Inter now, even even uh, in, in Serie A. But yeah, we can see. It's clear for all to see why they're not doing it. But that's not our problem. You can only beat what's in front of you. 
And uh, we done we done exactly that. A uh, little bit surprised by their starting lineup, but yeah, as you say, it was comfortable, really, really comfortable. I think the thing is, we're used to winning when we're we're the worst team under Conte. We're literally used to that. Um, but <laughs> we were sort of you know level and uh, slightly better than both teams, and yeah, comfortable two 0 victories. Fantastic two clean sheets, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark Swift in the chat. Big up to you, Mark, as well. And yeah, hit that like and sub and on Tommy's channel as well. Uh, Mark, uh, 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 obviously, all to see their issues, number nine. But we'll talk about them a bit later on, certainly about Skip. But the first goal was just defensive error after defensive error. 20 seconds into the second half, you've presumably had a team talk, keep it tight, 20 seconds, bang, goal. Uh, but Fernandez took it off of the goalkeeper. It wasn't a particularly good save anyway. And then whoever it was that skips uh, chested it past, didn't want it as much as skip. And then the goalkeeper should have done better with the uh, shot, I think. He got a hand to it and just tipped it in rather than over the bar. I I, I think, and, and it comes to a question about this guy who many wanted us as, as Spurs manager, me included, before the whole Nuno nonsense. Will he survive? Because... That that first goal in particular, and certainly the timing of it, says to me they're not playing for him. And I, I think Potter's a manager who wants to coach players. They're buying ready-made players like they do, who don't want to be coached. They're probably being told to do things differently than they're used to. And I just don't think they're playing for him. And I, I don't think he's got long to survive unless something drastic turns round. But what, what do you, I mean, this isn't a Chelsea uh show but it's nice to revel in the misery that they're in what's going wrong with Chelsea and do you think Potter will survive and if so how much longer I don't think he's the problem I think the problem is they just um they went like a kid in a sweet shop with loads of money and just started (laughs) buying everything they see on the shelves and there was no plan to it um I feel quite I think he's a good manager mate I agree with you I wanted him before we got um that other clown from Portugal um (laughs) uh, so, you know, would he survive? No, he won't survive unless they change their approach under what they were under Abramovich. So we don't know what Bodie's going to do, do we? To be honest, I mean, I I can't see it working. Like when you look at the other scumbags down the road, they've stuck by Arteta after years, finishing eighth twice, was it? But they've stuck by their yeah. man. They've let him clear out the players, bringing the players that he wanted to bring in. I don't think Potter's got any control over them that i don't believe that he he wanted to go and get enzo fernandez for 100 million whatever it was and the ukrainian i don't believe that they're he they're they're his picks so that says to me actually he won't survive the season i'd be very surprised if he survives the season i don't know who they'll bring in i wouldn't (laughs) be surprised to see Mourinho back yeah yeah yeah. at the end of the season it never felt a good fit. It never felt a good fit to me. Lukaku and Mourinho back for a third time. <laughs> might as well get David Luiz as well. David Luiz has been there a few times. I might as well get him for a third time. <laughs> well, they, they could do worse after that that display yesterday with John Terry in the defence. Absolutely mm. shocking, their defence. That's uh, what I noticed, Chris. Like I don't, I don't know how you say it. It's not a Chelsea. The days where you had a John Terry, a Lampard, a Drogba, a Cavallio... Yeah, like people that would fight for the shirt. There was no fight. They, they, they're they not with the manager. There's no one there, mate. They don't, you know, they got no. Mason Mount from the academy on the bench who doesn't look the same player as he's looked the last couple of years. Yeah. There's a lot of wrong at that club and it's fucking fantastic, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of comments. Ben Kaufman, how you doing, Ben? Uh, good evening, everyone. Cheers for the beers on Sunday, Chris. Uh, no problem. I owed you a couple anyway and it's always better to buy beers when we've won. And Wayne Bonner, good evening. Hope everyone's well. Good result yesterday. Hell of a goal by Skip. We'll be talking about that. My brother, I'm assuming Chelsea fan, is still in hiding. Uh, but yeah, what, what do you think of Potter? I, I don't know if you wanted him before Nuno. I know I did. Mark said he did. Uh, he's obviously done a tremendous job at Brighton, which the, the De Zerbi is now taking on to even better uh, heights. It's not a bad manager. Do you think Chelsea was one step too high for him? He needed a, a, a smaller step first before going to the the high, high highs of Chelsea. Uh, I I didn't want him to be honest with you. I didn't I didn't want Potter. It was too it was too early for him. I suppose the the problem in the Premier League now is you're either battling for Europe or you're battling relegation. In many ways, because you know, Brighton could just be you know, Brighton are two or three like next season. If they're fighting relegation, you wouldn't be that surprised, really, if you look at the squad. Um, yet they're, they're fighting for Europe right now, so the, so the difference is is thin, is, is, is very, very thin. 
Um, I'm not surprised they went for him. I'm very, very surprised they they sat Tuchel four or five games into the season. I mean, the guy won the Champions League for him 14 months ago. <laughs> One thing, no loyalty in football anymore is there, for, you know. No but um, one of the main things is is the fact that we obviously we struggled second game of the season. They should have beat us. They were all over us uh, with Tuchel. And one of the greatest things for us going into the game is that Potter plays four at the back. And we traditionally play good against teams that play four at the back. Against a three, like for like, we struggle under Conte, Stellini, whatever. Um, so as soon as I saw that, and you've got two relatively new centre-backs, you know, Koulibaly only turned up in the summer, Badia Shelley, um, uh, well, the other day, quite frankly. So... Um, yeah, when they when they lined up the way they did, I was I was very very happy. And if you look at the if you look at the game in general, it was just they they you know they they offered very very little. Mm. Um, and and I think Potter hasn't had had a say in any of the signings. To be quite honest with you, um, I don't think he's had a single say in in any Rid of the signings. Ridiculous though, isn't it? Six hundred million or whatever it is, and not one pound of that is 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 what uh, the the manager what, wants. What my head teacher used to say. Uh, during uh, revision, I think this is true my GCSEs. I remember she used to always say this. If you throw enough shit against the wall, some of it will stick. <laughs> I don't think head teachers should really be saying that, but that's what they're going for. If they spend enough money, if they throw enough money around, one or two of the players will be okay. And I think that's the case. In the coming years, one or two will pull through and do well. It's, it's, it's a matter of time. But um, it's just like a wasted season, a completely wasted season. And you can't, yeah. you can't do that because... You know, we can see Man City and Liverpool are in transition. The, the league, was, in many ways, was up for grabs if somebody really wanted it. But, yeah, they, they've got absolutely no chance. I feel like their time's going to come. But I don't know now. I don't know. There's only 13 games to the end of the season. They're going to really, really struggle to get into Europe. And that's fantastic for us. That's yeah. wonderful. West Ham aren't going to get into Europe. Chelsea aren't going to get into Europe. Obviously, Arsenal could win the title. <laughs> Let's, I'm convinced they're not going to win the title. That's a whole no, another conversation. But I, I love, I love seeing, I love seeing Chelsea's demise. Yeah, I mean, I agree with Mark. I don't think he's going to be in charge come next season. And then you've got the issue of £600 million worth of players that the next manager doesn't want either. Uh, Wayne saying uh, he's out of his depth at Chelsea with the money they've spent recently. I can't see any real balance there. He's on Bovo time and should find another club. I'm not sure where he'd go. Uh, but anyway, that's Chelsea. No one cares about Chelsea. We care about this guy at the moment. Uh, Ollie Skip. Absolutely delighted for him. And uh, Mark, one man's injury... Benton Kerr is another man's opportunity and he's taking his opportunity again. He's coming back to the skip that we we saw in his first season in the Premier League before the massive injury and uh, brilliant timing as well with Benton Kerr injured. I was worried season is over that important Benton Kerr, but skip absolutely super, should have been man of the match for me. I don't know who was man of the match on, on TV, but it should have been skip. I think uh, a lot sorry, of Chris, sorry, Chris, I have to interject this person, person of the match. <laughs> player, it's player, mate. It's player. Is it player? Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Cheers, Sam. Uh, yeah, uh, for me, should have been person of the match. Uh, the, ima- the, <laughs> the amount of times the loose balls were there, he did about seven slide tackles, not one of them off time, not one of them dangerous or anything. Took his goal superbly well and driving us forward. And I wouldn't say we've got a real player there, Mark, because we knew we had a real player there, Mark. Mark uh, we, we've got a player that we knew was there, come back and absolutely superb. And him versus Benton Kerr next season can only be good for the team. Yeah. And I just remember the meltdown before the West Ham game, just going on Twitter and the fucking people like in hysterical tears saying, oh, why isn't Sar starting? Why isn't Sar starting? Why is he fucking starting? Skip? Just let them pick the team. Like, you know, he's been, I've always liked Skip, you know, the players that we've seen come through in central midfield in Ryan Mason, Winks, he's, he's head and shoulders above them. You can, you, I've, you, I've seen it from day one, mate. Um, some people don't see it. <clears throat> I don't, I, I think he's got a bit of everything. I said the only yeah. thing he can add is, is to get goals. That was his first league goal for us yesterday. Um, the only thing I don't like about our midfielders, mate, because I've not spoken to you for a while, they're all pretty similar. They're all a similar type, aren't they? We haven't yeah. got. Um, we haven't got anyone, your famous one, Chris. We haven't got the playmaker, have we? We still haven't no. got it, mate. We still yeah. haven't got it. Since we, have, we, have. He, 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 All we have. He, he, we have. He's just that he scored our second goal and plays up top. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so they're all pretty similar. Um, and it is a concern because, you know, Benton Core, 
isn't going to be back this season. He might not be back the start of next season, and he ain't going to. It's going to be a long time before he gets up to scratch. He could be done. It could be. It's a Wanyama type could injury, so it could, could be, be done. Could be Basuma out for the season, pretty much. I would say. So we've only got three. You know, unless you uh, class Alfie Divine as well. You know. Free. Well, he is training four. with the first team now, isn't he? So you'd expect him yeah, to play good. some part at the end of the season. Probably not any first eleven to massive extent, but certainly yeah. coming on in games. So it's going to be difficult, mate. It's going to be difficult. So he's going to get a run of games, which is what he needs, and which is what Sar needs as well. So you know, no matter what happens, they're going to get game time. So we're going to know whether they're up to the stand that they need to be. Regardless, they look good against Milan as a partnership. So you know. Mm. We have no choice. We don't have. Yeah. We literally have no choice. So we're going to get to see them play, which is good in in a, in one way. Yeah, I mean Wayne uh, definitely sees Skip as being a long term player. Keeps improving and is taking his chance. He's only going to get better. I mean, Tommy, it's, it's even better because it's another one of our own. Uh, you could see what it meant to him when he celebrated and everything like that. Not really sure of his choice of footwear on match of the day too when he was talking in his little sandals and socks. But um, anyway. Uh, took his goal superbly well for someone who's never scored four Spurs. Uh, didn't even look like a, a second thought in his mind about having a shot from outside of the area. So it shows the confidence of the guy, even if he's not playing that well. And I, I thought he was superb. The, the closing down ev everything about his game, I thought was was great yesterday. Yeah, it was against Chelsea, who weren't really there, but you can only beat who's in front of you. Uh, how how could you see Skip being for us? I've got so much flack. I get so much flack on streams, on Twitter. The one guy I always stick up for is Skip. I've got, don't get me wrong, it's because he's homegrown. I've always got a little bit of a soft spot for homegrown. Like I don't I don't even want to sell Tanganga to a certain extent. But, uh, but look, Tanganga probably looks done. So he's our next big homegrown talent, uh, Ollie Skip. Uh, and he can do a bit of everything. He really can. The thing, the thing is, he revels doing the dirty work, like he did at Norwich. The dirty work that doesn't get publicised yeah. as much, doesn't really get the assists and the goals. Although he did, uh, did Sunday, and I'm, I'm very happy for him. I don't need to go. I don't need to go against Chelsea to know how, how, how class of a player Oliver Skip is. Pochettino said it. Jose Mourinho said it. Future Spurs captain, not just a good player, future Spurs captain. So you know he's got his the right his, his head on his shoulders. You know he's the he's exact opposite to Endon Bele. Uh, and some of the toxic players before them, you know, mm. maybe not the most talented, but gets the absolute best out of his talent. And yeah, he's adaptable. He can do a bit of everything. And look, he's never going to be a playmaker for me, but he's still young enough where he can push into those positions when needed. Um, especially if we go to four at the back, you know, sometimes you're probably going to need uh, a, a cam or we'll play a flat four, three, three, and you'll have to move up there now and again. And, and we've seen a few times before he got injured last season, he was running up the right side on the wing. I've seen him pacing it past a few players, <laughs> dribbling. So the guy's versatile. Um, he's a homegrown boy, 21, 22. I think we're very, very lucky to have him. And I've had his back for a long time. The amount of comments I've heard saying, oh, he's bang average, he's championship standard. He was fantastic for Norwich in the championship, got him promoted, but he's not just that. Last season, first half of last season, him and Son were fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see him back in. He's, he, we know he's only got the opportunity because of Ben Tenko's injury. Yeah. If, if Ben Tenko and Hoybjö are fit, the way they've been playing together, you're going to they'll probably be starting from here until the end of the season. Yeah. Um, and then Basuma, you throw Basuma in there as well. He'll probably get the games too because he's thirty million pounds. So you've got to take advantage of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Kane done the same because he had Soldado yeah. and Adebayor in front of him. They were injured, come in um, around the same time this season and smashed it. He's never looked back. So. Um, uh, I'm a massive, massive Skip fan, uh, and he will. I'm so glad he played in, in front of Saar for the West Ham game. I really am. You know, it's easy. I mean, don't get me wrong, Saar was great against AC Milan, but Skip done a lot of the dirty work. West Ham was fantastic. Chelsea, even without the goal, it was absolutely fantastic. So, uh, him and Hoybier, it looks like a real, it looks like a real good partnership. Mm. Yeah, and Hoiberg deserves a bit of credit for that as well, doesn't he? Because he yeah, helped Benton Kerr settle. Looks like he's helping, uh, uh, Skip settle back in the team now. He's probably done the same with Saar. Uh, he's very unlucky, Hoiberg, with a shot against the post. And he can do the dirty work as well. Play. We know Hoiberg can do the dirty work, which yeah. gives Skip the opportunity to move forward too. So, yeah, yeah no, it's a good balance. It gives him a chance to interchange as well. So, you know, one move, Hoiberg goes forward, uh, Skip back, and then vice versa, uh, 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 the next move. But uh, yeah. another guy who played, Mark, I was surprised he started, but I'm starting to love Richarlison. Uh, this whole this whole thing started just by a, a 
not really a bad challenge, but not anything that you've seen that's worse than anything else. And then he's caused a controversy just from getting up and having a moan and sending off, not sending off or whatever. But other than that, his performance, he's never, ever going to stop running for Charles. And I think uh, ball to feet, passing, he's not the greatest. Uh, Son's better at that. Uh, he needs the goal. I, I wish he can get a goal quickly just to settle him down a little bit. But I think without the goal, he did pretty well, I think. And I was delighted that uh, uh, Kulu came off for Son and not for Charleston because you've still got to have an element that I can still stay in this team and, and not just the easy move taking him off for Son. But uh, how, how do you think he played overall? If I'm honest, mate, I don't think he had a great game. I know people are saying he does work hard. I feel sorry for him in the sense that I don't really think he's playing in his best position, which I think yeah. is central. We see it at the World Cup. At number nine, he was fucking brilliant, mate. He was one of the best players at the World Cup. Scored two of the best goals at the World Cup. Mm. Um, he works hard, yes. Um, I feel that he needs to play central. And you're not going to put him in front of Kane, are you? That, let's be honest yeah. about it. But I agree with you that I was glad to see Kulusevski come off and keep Richarlison on. Because he does work hard, mate. And... I, 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 I can't lie. I've never been a massive Richarlison fan. I didn't... No, I hated him, him at Everton. Yeah, I, didn't particularly like him at I didn't particularly like him at <laughs> Everton. Uh, but I remember when he signed for us, the Everton fans... Like, Everton fans are like my age. You know, I'm 41 years of age. And I was speaking to them and they were saying, like, he's the best player that they've seen at Everton. And I was like, really? Like, I just couldn't believe it. Because, it, because of that work ethic and the way he sort of integrates himself within the team and works for the team, so and he pretty funny. much single-handedly kept him up last year as well. Yeah, so exactly. He's probably so heart he's... ruling and head, probably. In the head. To yeah, some although, although to be fair, mate, as I say, I'm 41. There ain't been that many great players at Everton in that time, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> Let's be honest about it. Um, so Big Dunk. Big Dunk's probably he is good. good. Big Dunk and Ferguson <laughs> was good, mate, yeah. But they ain't had many. Young Wayne Rooney. Uh, it's not, we're not doing the Everton pod, though. No, um, no. So... I can see the work ethic and I love the shithousery um, and he definitely, he definitely cares. Um, but I didn't think he had a great game, Chris, to be honest. I know, I've heard other people say that he did. It could be because I'm sitting next to my mate the whole game who moans about Richardson all fucking day. <laughs> that, you know, that blinds my, you know, he shouldn't be there. He shouldn't be there. I've never rated Richardson. So I've got that in my fucking ear the whole game. So it could be that my, uh, I was blinded by that, but I, I it, it was. A, listen, there's not one player on that pitch that I thought had a bad game, but he didn't stand out for me. Put it that way, Chris. He didn't stand out. Yeah. What, what, what do you think, Tommy? Uh, uh, is it the, the different position? He needs to be central, like he is for Brazil, where he scored goals, and and Everton when he kept them up uh, before when Calvert Lewin was injured. Do you think it's a confidence issue? Different change of 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 system. What, what, what I, do you I, think's I, the issue with Charles and not 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 scoring the goals that he was at Everton? To be fair, he's hardly played on the left side starting because Son played. Son's played twenty one of I think he started twenty one of twenty four games in the league. So uh, I think Richarlison's two starts that he's had in the last few weeks are his only starts um, at left wing because he played. He played on the right, didn't he? When Kulu was injured, so you had Son, yeah. Kane, and Richarlison, and it doesn't work on the right. I never saw Richarlison play on the right for Everton. I saw him play predominantly on the left when Everton were good on Ancelotti. He played on the uh, left and Cavalum is up top. So I think his best position for me, people will, you know, people will uh, disagree. It's the left wing. It has to be because that's why we bought him for 60 million pounds. We bought him as a left winger. Um, that's where he's got his 213 goals. So, you know, I suppose he can play. He plays number nine for Brazil. But you're not going to play. You're not going to play on a left wing with Vinicius Jr. in front of you, are you? So, <laughs> you know, he has to play. He has to play up top for Brazil. And yeah. don't get me wrong. It's fantastic that he does. And he scored a lot of goals, but. Still, predominantly, he's a left winger. I think he's been unlucky. I do. I think he's very unlucky. The first seven games of this season, Son was atrocious. Absolutely horrible. That's when he should have been given his opportunity. Because I don't know if you remember, when he was coming off the bench, he was fantastic. But the only yeah. opportunity he got was coming on the right-hand side. He's not. He's just definitely not a right winger. So I, then, I, I do who feel... Would you have played, who would you have played on the right, though, at that time? Because Kulazewski was injured, wasn't he? So it was a it needs must, I think, at that time. That... Absolutely, absolutely. But still, he should have got an opportunity earlier on the left. 
But st- uh, definitely, yeah, definitely he's got to go on the right. I mean, you had, yeah, Lucas has been sort of in and out of injury. He was injured yeah. at that time, wasn't he? He was injured at that time. So yeah. we did we didn't have another option. You can look at that's a problem in the depth in many ways, you know. Mm. <laughs> even even through January, we signed another left winger. We signed a third left winger. Yeah. Lucas is on his way out. We've got three left wingers now. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, Paris is <laughs> left wing as well. So we've got four left wingers, <laughs> no right winger. Um, which yeah. is just yeah, bad, uh, bad, bad moves in the January window, as as it always is in the transfer windows. Um, but uh, Richarlison, I think he is a left winger. I also do think he is he is in there. He was signed to replace Kane. When Kane goes, which I think will be this season, he is yeah. there as the number nine. Because, you know, he did play there last season when Calvin Luton was injured. Um, so I, do, I think that's why I don't I think that's why he's there. And and talking about the game, I don't think I don't think he played well, but he's got that fire. Hasn't he? He's got that tenacity you need in London derbies, and it was the same against West Ham. In fact, I thought it was really bad against West Ham, to be honest with you. Mm. I think he was really, really poor. Um, he, he he improved slightly against Chelsea, but very, very little end product. I wanted Son to start. I really did, but yeah, I, I was surprised he didn't start after the uh, goal against West Ham. But and he had ten days rest, so ten yeah. days Son. He's only played that substitute appearance. He's, you know, he's mentally been able to rest physically. Um, so I did. I, I was like, when I was looking at the lineups, I wanted Son to start, but look, the correct decision was made. Win two 0 yeah. I mean, do, do you think Richarlison will come good? I I agree with you, Tommy. I think Kane. This I think Man United will put in a serious, serious bid for Kane this summer. If he's going to sign a contract, it will get rejected. If he isn't going to sign a contract, Levy's got a decision to make and cash in on him. And then if he does, don't necessarily need to buy a striker because Richarlison's there. That's where he plays for Brazil and did for Everton. But we'd have to sign someone. But do you think he'll come good? Yeah, I do. I rate Richarlison. I really, really do rate Richarlison. Sixty million pounds, a lot of money. But I'm for in the market. That's you know, that's what you got to pay. I think it's fifty rising to sixty. Forty games, like twenty goes for Brazil. I think, you know, you have to pay. It's fifty, sixty million pounds, just the way it is. Yeah. Do you think he'll come good, Mark? If he plays a striker, I think he'll he'll do okay. Yeah, I think he'll yeah. do okay. Yeah, Conte's catch up in the chat. How are you doing? Uh, why would you come on every time at this time? I need to go to the store to get food. Can't you come on at 10 at night? Uh, I'm sure my girlfriend would be delighted about me screaming and shouting about Spurs at 10 in the evening. <laughs> uh, this guy, uh, start with you, Tommy. Uh, God knows what's happened to this guy, but long may it continue. Uh, the defence as well, but primarily Emerson. Uh, he looks like a changed player, Emerson. Would you put that down to? Is that just his work ethic? Povo is now a genuine threat. Uh, he's he's having a baby or had a baby, uh, judging by his um, uh, celebration against West Ham. So maybe that's matured him. Uh, what would you put this sudden? I don't. He's not. He's not a world beater, and there wasn't really a, a, that high a ceiling to <laughs> to compare his uh, recent performances to. But he's definitely improved. Um, would you put that down to? He said, we said this about, it's funny you should mention the baby thing, because we said this about Ndombele. I remember during pre-season <laughs> a year and a half ago, we were like, oh, do you know what? He's matured now because he had a baby, He'd done a baby celebration in pre-season. Didn't last very long. He had a couple of good games and that was it. I think it's safe to say Emerson Royal can't really put him in the Ndombele, Ndombele category. To be fair to him, he fights hard. He gives it his best, even when he was getting criticised. You know, he was still yeah. up for the, I don't know how he was, but he was still up for it because he was shocking. He still is shocking for me, but he was, you know, he's shown a different side to him. Um, uh, I'd done a little short earlier, and you, you expect a right wing back, left wing back to bolt up the line. He's changed it. He knows he can't cross. Everyone knows he can't cross. He's got two assists in 66 games, something like that. So he's making the run centrally, and he's finding space. The defen- defense defenders from the opposition team are not able to pick him up. It's fantastic. Yeah. They probably will eventually. They'll probably see it. The opposition managers will see it. But well, he's certainly his decision making, his passing has, has got a lot better. I don't rate his defending at all. People will say he's a good defender because he makes tackles. Positioning is horrible. That 90% of his challenges are slide challenges from behind. So it's a matter of time before they don't start working out. But look, he's he's doing his best. He's doing his best. He's fighting hard. And I can only commemorate him for for you know um replying to 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 the negative comments he's had and I've given him plenty he's he's still fight he's still fighting and poro poro signing definitely has made an impact for me that that has you know kicked him up the arse a little bit yeah i th- think it can only be a good thing a few uh, comments here uh, on the charles and wayne says it's attack and play isn't what it should be but it's defensive work and track and back impress me he needs games to settle in fully 
this season now. I'm not sure he's going to uh, get that. Uh, Conte's catch up. Uh, we're going to win the league now after yesterday's destruction of the plastic blues. And Emerson Royal is now valued at 200 million, 50 million. It increases each day that passes. And Mark, how you doing, buddy? Uh, but yeah, Mark, uh, Emerson, uh, what's changed? Do you think? It could be a number of things, but something definitely has, I think. Um, I'll be honest, controversial. I don't actually think he's that bad anyway, to be honest with you. I think it's over-exaggerated how bad he actually is. I thought the back end of last season, he done okay. When Doherty was... Remember when Doherty got injured against Villa and everyone was fucking losing their shit going, oh, great, now we've got to play Emerson there. And he actually did all right. He did okay. The start of the season, go back, watch things. Like He did okay as well. I'm not saying he was brilliant, but he was all right. We know he can't cross. We know he's not a wing back. I, I sort of disagree. I don't think his defending is that bad. I do know what you're saying, Tommy. He does slide in a lot. But so does Romero. You know, they, they both do. They both... I'd rather him, put it this way, I would rather Emerson Royale than Serge Aurier. Okay? So I don't think he's that bad. Is he the answer? No. I've always said he's not the answer for us. Um, but I give the guy credit. Like, I like he reading that he spent all this money trying to improve himself. Um, yeah, yeah. You, you can't fault his uh, work ethic. And, no. Uh, you always ask, don't you, for a player to, to show his all try. And yeah. You can't, no. you can't fault that at all. The, no. the quality isn't there, but you can't fault no, We want attitude. better. We want someone better. Look, we want, I and mean, we hope that we got it in Poro, who, by the way, one of the worst debuts I've ever seen in my life, but that's a different story. <laughs> but listen, he isn't good enough for what we need, but he's been doing, he's been doing well. And I give the guy credit. Same as Lamella. I like Lamella because I like players. Tommy mentioned Endombele. I couldn't stand the guy in the end because he, he's got all that talent and he don't put it in. Give me an Emerson over Endombele every day of the week, mate. Do you know what I mean? I like players that put it in and put it in for the shirt and give everything they do. Whether he's good enough, that's where you you have to pick up on on Paratici or whoever for bringing them in. If he ain't good enough, that's not his fault. Do you know what I mean? I, no. I, if he tries, mate, I'm, I back him. I back him. Yeah, I mean, him. Justin made a really good observation. Uh, 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 when was he on last Monday? Saying that he's he's now drifting inside rather than going wide, and Kulu's taking the the, the place out wide, and he definitely thing. did that on on. Yeah, he's, he's coming through centrally. He's, that's yeah. how he scored. He scored yeah. in and the he's box. Definitely so. doing that. So whether that's a, a, a him and Kulu thing, a Conte and Stellini thing, an all four thing, I'm not sure, but it's definitely working. Uh, and Tommy uh, said about the defence, not going to be a very good host here because I'm going to trigger you. Dyer's getting a new contract. Is he actually? Is this confirmed? Well, well, it's rumour, isn't it? And I know you're a massive fan of him, so I wanted to get your take. Well, I heard I that do, he I do apologise. I heard that he got an eight yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for, for me, for, for me, if he's going to be, if he's going to be a, a, a backup, fine, give him a contract. But if he's our, our I don't, I, I, I don't back, want him as a backup. You know. I tell you why I don't want him as a backup. Because his influence in the dressing room now, that's how he gets. As soon, if he, he won't be back up, if a new manager comes in, he's like a, he's like the teacher's pet. He speaks all these languages. He's, he's a big boy, six foot two, got the biggest head you've ever seen. So you think that he can head a balls and he's going to be amazing in the air. So he's got all these things going for him. I, I swear to God, the reason he's still around is because of this language thing. He, he speaks Portuguese. That's why he stayed with Nuno Jose. The guy is below average. I want to say average. He's he will be lucky to get in a starting 11 of the teams in the bottom half of the Premier League if he wasn't at Spurs. Uh, and it's not an agenda. Well, I suppose it is an agenda because I want him gone. So I, I guess if I'm negative to die and he goes, then absolutely it's an agenda. I, I think he's I think he's a nothing player. He doesn't engage in tackles. Whenever he's got engaged, he runs off, lets the other boys do the job. Uh, I don't rate him at all. You know, I mentioned Wanyama a little bit earlier. I think that in that C15, 16, 16, 17, he was carried. He had Dembele next to him, Ericsson in front. Brilliant uh, back four. He was the weakest um, part of that starting eleven. Dyer. And I saw it when Wanyama came in for that season. He was incredible. That was the best Spurs team, 16-17. Yeah. When Wanyama was there in front of Dyer, that was the best team he ever had. Yeah, we had and it's not just from that. in the league that season by... Easily. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And then at centre-back, he's just his, his tactical awareness is terrible. His, his defending consists of running off, pretty much. So I, I don't rate him all. We've done okay. The team were tested yesterday. Romero, Davis, 
Um, Langley weren't really tested, were they? Let's face it, with no number nine. Same with West Ham. Yeah, I mean, Mark, uh, Mark Cousin says it here. Uh, I think uh, Tommy mentioned it. Since Poch, every manager has picked Dyer. Does that say something? Um, you actually got dropped by Poch. You got dropped by Poch for yeah. weeks in that I entire mean, last season. Yeah, I mean, best of a bad bunch, Mark, or or there's something that they see in training that we don't see that... I mean, that Leicester game, at least two of the goals he stood off, stood off, stood off. I don't mind the standing off, but at some point, if the player keeps the ball, you've got to engage. You can't just stand off, stand off forever. Because in the end, I think for Iniato's goal, he essentially shielded the ball from Forster, so Forster had no chance. But every manager picks him. Does that say something, or is that just <laughs> There's no one else. Well, I love Eric Dyer and Eric yeah. Dyer loves me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Um, what, what was it? How long has he got left on his contract? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm, yeah, I can't even respond to the contract you said, Chris, because I've. <laughs> I wouldn't be giving him a new... Co- I, listen, if an offer come in for him, I would let him go, mate. I, don't, I agree with Tommy. Yeah. I don't think he's good. At, he isn't good enough for us. Yeah. We've we've seen him long enough now. I don't hate the guy. He's another one that... A bit of a passion, oh, he's person, isn't it? He does, but he's not, good en- he's not good enough. He is not good enough. He doesn't give us the homegrown status. Um, yeah. You know, we, we sh- it's one of them. When we got that offer of Man United years ago, we don't know when to sell players, I think, and that's part of our problem. You know, if you get an offer of whatever it was, thirty million, that supposedly Mourinho wanted him when he was at United, we should have let him go then. Um, I wouldn't be giving him a new contract. I don't think he's good enough. Uh, I don't hate the guy, but you said that Leicester game, he was awful. He was absolutely yeah. awful. Um, I mean, he wasn't he the only that. one. Let's be fair that's about it, but his one stood out because they they've resulted in goals. That's the problem, Chris. With, with a lot of these players, is they'll have two or three good games, but you know, there's a shit show around the corner. They're just so inconsistent. Um, so, no, we need to improve. We need to improve the whole back line, um, and he yeah. needs to go. Frankly, oh, yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting. But uh, you mentioned shit show there, brings us very nicely onto VAR that on yesterday. Oh, don't uh, fucking get me started on that. Uh, well, let's get you started, uh, Mark. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen the referee make a decision after three minutes and then go and check a monitor. Uh, it's always no three minutes uh, for VAR to get involved. I mean, I just, I, I don't think it was a sending off, but then. Uh, Sterling had a penalty shout in the first half, which he didn't get clipped. Whether it was enough for a penalty, I'm not sure. Uh, Thiago has thumped Romero in the head. That didn't get looked at. So pretty much every single decision <laughs> was wrong. Uh, terrible. Ter- but that, that, that sending off, not sending off, it was right in bloody front of him as well. I saw it from where I was. Green is further away <laughs> than he was to the referee. And he's t- taken three minutes. And then, but... It's just and and Arsenal the, the 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 goal that they got disallowed Trossard pathetic that there's nowhere near the goalkeeper and that's been disallowed. I mean we talk about VAR all the time in negative ways and Gary Cahill said it's getting better on match of the day. I don't know what he's been watching to be perfectly honest. Uh, but <laughs> what can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why why was VAR introduced into the game? Yeah, it's to stop all of this shit happening, but nothing's changed. Exactly, exactly. And has it stopped it happen? No, it no, no it hasn't. So yes, go, but let's get rid of the fucking thing. It's a waste yeah. of time. It's a waste of time. It causes more controversy. You then think the game is corrupt because you're thinking, well, if they've got these cameras, how can they not get the right decisions? And probably, yeah, it probably was the right decision in the end. Yeah. But if you're in the state, I mean, at least if you're watching it on TV, you sort of know what's going on in the stadium. Yeah, we were yeah. like, what the fuck is it going on? Because it come up on the screen, VAR check. And I was like, well, he's going to go because he punched Emerson in the face. I could see it where I was in the second tier. Like, So I was like, well, he's going to go. And then it said, so it's a VAR check on, on the screen. And then he gave him the red card. And then it says, it said something else. They're not on the screen. Go and check. He's going to check the TV cameras yeah. or something. And I was like, what the fuck? What, what is going on? Like, I, I, I still don't even really understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I, 
And then he runs off the fucking pitch in the second half and goes for a shit. Oh, that, that was quite oh, funny, wasn't it? I, I thought he was taking a shit was. too, to be fair. I thought yeah. he was doing Eric Dyer. I, I thought he was doing Eric Dyer. I, I think no the referee, had, the referee had an absolute shocker yesterday. Thankfully, it didn't make any difference to the game. But uh, Conte's catch-up says, sick of it already. They'll be replacing, replacing the ref with R2-D2 and C3PO. Uh, it's brought in to annoy the fans and it's working. But, I mean, Tommy... I know, I'll let you into a little secret on Stuart Atwell. I know his wife. Well, I used right. to work with his wife. Ooh. A whole, family, <laughs> you know a whole family of Arsenal fans, by the way. <laughs> I'm not saying he is. I don't know who he supports. I know his wife. Yeah. And she was an Arsenal fan, as were her whole family. So, yeah. But I mean, so, to- say what you want, yeah. but that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, just when you think VAR can't get any worse... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you were at the game. I know me and Mark were, but like five minutes of not knowing what was going on there. I thought I'd seen it all with uh, Raheem Sterling uh, and then the penalty for Man City, uh, Bergvine's first game. That was about three minutes and that was long enough. But where does it end this VAR? Because it's We're not going to go back, are we? Once no. technology gets introduced... Uh, you're not yeah. going to go back. I think it should. I think the only technology should be used is the goal line technology. Yeah, works. That's f- exactly. It's fine. It's uh, you know, it's absolutely sound. Absolutely sound. Um, as I said, you can't you can't go back. I said from the start, it should be like a challenge system. It works perfectly in cricket. It works mm-hmm. perfectly in tennis. Okay, it's not a stop start sport like like those. So it's, it'll be plus, slightly different. Plus, managers will use that to time waste at the end and and things like that, but. Yeah, absolutely, but um, that's better than getting these decisions, and it takes the beauty out of the game. It really, yeah. really does. You when can't you celebrate, celebrate, Tommy, can you? That's the thing. No, you celebrate, no. I don't it's know just, what to celebrate yeah. half the time now. And it's not just the offsides either. It's not like, oh, it's no. definitely onside. We're not going to celebrate. Anything could have happened like five minutes ago, and the goal would get cancelled. Like someone handballs it, and this, that, or the other. You just don't, you don't know, especially at the ground. I feel sorry for the season ticket holders. Like having to deal with that every time a goal goes in, it's yeah. um yeah, it's, got enough it's, it's to worry about with a team, let alone VAR. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the decision itself, the decision itself should have been a sending off. Um, at the end of the day, Emerson was lucky. Emerson shouldn't be doing that. That was silly, yeah. like smashing him in the back. But yeah. at the end of the day, if if yeah. you make a challenge, if you shoulder barge someone and it accidentally hits them in the face, fair enough. But ZH wasn't shoulder barging someone. If it acts, if his face slap accidentally hits him in the face, I mean his chest slap or whatever hits him in the face. Yeah. Listen, he didn't need to do that. So for me, if it touches the face, in it one, it looked like a punch from one of the angles. I, it was, yeah, as well. yeah, I think he's pushed him face, away. But if you if 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 you raise your hand like that, you're asking for trouble. It's stupid. But of course, well, this are. is the yeah. other thing. It's inconsistent because Martial the other season. Remember we beat them six one. He was sent off for something similar <laughs> on the manner. Yeah. Um, that was a red card, and this one. This is what I mean. It's not sorting anything out. It's not. Well, it's, it's up for interpretation. It's up for interpretation. That's the issue. That's the issue. Yeah. The goal line technology. It's either over the line. It's of definitive. It isn't. It's not. There's definitive, no grey there. It's black yeah. or white. You know, offside. It's 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 offside. But if you know, if he's leading that way, it's not offside. If it's toe out, it's just. And, and I I don't even know the handball rule anymore. No, I don't even bother uh, with that. So I mean. Just move it back if it's offside. Just do the goal line technology in your sides. Offsides, goal line technology. Yeah, that's how it should stay. It's just absolutely, yeah. But that, that Thiago Silva, he's looked at him and then he's put his uh, uh, elbow I've there. That, I've not seen that. Oh, well, they showed it on match of the day, but uh, yeah. there was no VAR check or anything. I haven't seen like, that. Romero I don't think... was down holding his head, but I don't yeah, think I saw that. I don't, I don't I know what that. they're doing in that VAR room, you know. I see Romero go down during the game, but I've not seen the replay. Yeah. Can can I ask you boys? Because we haven't touched on it. I just want like, just one thing on the Chelsea game. I know we're, we're done with it. Um, but what did you make of Romero on the ball yesterday? Was it just me? Oh, I was screaming whenever he got on the ball, Romero. The amount of times he lost it. I can't. Was, I'll be honest, yeah. mate. I don't really remember no. that. Um, Honestly, <laughs> my girlfriend doesn't. My girlfriend doesn't like football. <laughs> And I was telling her, I was like, Romero, every time he, he gets a ball, he's lethargic, he's messing about. And I love Romero. And then he kept doing it. Free, he's done free one great thing, time. Tommy, what I remember. He, he nutmegged. I can't remember who it was. It, by yeah, the no, he nutmegged. He nutmegged yeah. someone. But he lost yeah. the ball two other times doing that. Mm. He lost the ball so often with his bad touches and stuff. If you watched it, it's weird because you watched it live. Yeah. But if you watched it from the TV, you'd probably be shouting at the screen because you yeah. zoomed in, zoom in on some of them. And you're just like, what the fuck is he doing? Seriously, sometimes he does, he, does that, to, he does have a tendency to do that, though. Unfortunately, yeah, one every five or six games, he gets really lethargic on the ball. It's it's it's, it's weird. 
Um, because he's usually very good on the ball. He's not like a Toby Alderweireld where he's going to, you know, play 35 yard passes, good. but he's brave, comes out of the ball, makes those passes. But now and again, just really lethargic yesterday. Yeah, I, I didn't notice either, to be honest, to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> I was more <laughs> looking at other things. Uh, but yeah, Conte's catch up will come to this in a bit. I want to know what the summer's going to be like and what type of caliber of player we're going to get in. I worry that this coming transfer window will be very limited. We'll come on to that. Uh, a bit later on. Uh, but I saw this stat. Harry Kane, 20 plus goals in each of the last nine seasons in all competitions, Mark. Uh, not bad at all for one season wonder. I think it's only him and Lewandowski, isn't it, that have done that in the top five leagues? I read somewhere yeah, as well. I, I think Kane's definitely the only one who's done that in England. In England, yeah. I think out of the top five leagues, it's only him and Lewandowski yeah. um, that have done it. Over yeah. the past week, five seasons, I think they said. Anyway, yeah. Um, well, he just yeah, he just keeps doing it, mate. There's no surprise. But that was another one. I didn't celebrate that too hard because I see Dyer. It was right in front of me. Dyer was leaning on their defender. I thought they're gonna fucking VAR this, and he's not gonna. So I'm not gonna bother celebrating it. That's what I'm saying. That's it. Kill it kills it. Like yeah. Um. So I thought, yeah, they're definitely gonna pull that up, but they didn't for some reason. Um. But yeah, he's he's just. What can you say, mate? He, just consistently does it, doesn't he? Clearly, you know, yeah. he's just he's just a legend, mate. Simple yeah. as that. Well, well, I mean, Tommy, if, if we're right and he goes in the summer, that's uh, not just Harry Kane. The, the, it's not just the goals. The amount he's uh, he's added assisting in, in the last few seasons. Uh, and, and we're not going to get top dollar for him because he's only got a year left. It's not like he's got three years. You want him, you pay top dollar. Uh, I mean... I, I could ask how Chris. good is Harry Kane, but we've asked this time and time and time again. The answer remains the same. But, I mean, how do we cope if we don't have Harry Kane and the amount of goals that he scores and contributes to? <laughs> and the team's getting weak. I'm, I'm convinced a lot of the players come in for Harry Kane as well. Like, when we finish sixth and seventh, they're looking at Son and Kane and saying, OK, you know, we're not great. Um, we, we, we know we've got sixth and seventh, two seasons running. But the fact that you've got Son and Kane, we're going to get back there. You haven't got Kane. If you haven't got Kane, you lose a bit of Son as well. Um, and Son's no spring chicken either. Uh, and I'm convinced Kane's going to go. We we take this guy for granted. And I'm guilty of it too. I take him for granted because the guy is exceptional. Absolutely exceptional. The season where he got top goal scorer and top assist maker, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't In my lifetime, I don't think that's going to happen in the Premier League. Top goal scorer and top assist maker. You've got someone like Haaland who's an incredible goal scorer, but you know he's not going to get those assists. He just, yeah. he, he just isn't. He hasn't got that passing range. So I was talking to a Man City fan and I go to him. I asked a question on a neutral stream. I said, who's the best passer in the league? He went, it's between De Bruyne and Kane. I'm like, probably Kane. And this is a Man City fan. I'm like, wow, wow, wow. And he is an awesome par uh, passer. We, we take this guy for, for granted. Even yesterday, a couple of nutmegs in no man's land moves it to the side, almost creates an opportunity for himself. He does it time and time again. Certain games, he just he's got no space. He's got no right to score goals from there. And, and hold-up play as well. His hold-up play is like it's just unbelievable. Incredibly strong. Hasn't got the most pace, but on the on the shoulder, per times his runs perfectly on the shoulder. Um, it's the same with centre backs. The best centre backs are not the quickest, not even the tallest, like Beresi Cannavaro, but positioning, positioning is paramount. And it is it is for Kane. He's just he's phenomenal, and he won't rely because he doesn't rely on pace. He could get another eight nine years out of him. If yeah. a club signs him, yeah. they can easily get another yeah. seven, eight He can years. drop back. He can drop back as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's near post on the corners, isn't he? He's near post, heading the corners out. Um, he, he's an all-round phenomenal player. The greatest we've ever produced. But I don't care what anybody says. He's the greatest we've ever produced. Yeah, and, uh, what uh, I would say on him, there's only one club I think he's going to go to, and I think you're both right, is Man United. Yeah, well, they're what crying I would say out for is, someone, aren't they? What I would say, if they there's talk now, I don't know, I don't follow Man United, but there's talk that the Glazers might stay until the summer. Well, the only thing I think that's going to keep Kane is we get someone to come in to invest alongside um, Enik, or they, they they fuck off. I think that's the only way, that's the only chance we've got to keep him, because I don't think he'll sign a contract under Daniel Levy. If we win the or FA Cup, the investment. if we win the FA Cup, big, big, big. And finish if... top four, maybe. Mm. Maybe. Because I, I know Brad, Brad Matthews, he's convinced after the West, uh, uh, where was it that he broke the record? That was West Ham. No. Man City, Man City. Man City. The, the emotion he had on his face, the fans singing his name and everything. 
I think, yeah, I think that's was, he ain't leaving. He ain't going anywhere. He won't get that love and adulation anywhere else. And you look at what happened with Gareth Bale. Yeah, he won a load of trophies. Uh, but it depends on... I, I think if Kane weren't a Spurs fan, he'd have been gone a long time ago. I think his heart has... Uh, well, let's face it. He extent. wanted to go to Man City, didn't he? Yeah, two exactly. Two. Exactly. Exactly. If he didn't uh, have a three-year contract, he would have gone two years he ago. He would have gone. Yeah, he would have gone. It's as simple as that. Yeah, he would have gone. contract held him back. His, his brother... Stupid. They His were stupid. fucked him over big time. Yeah, fucked him well, they were over stupid there, spending a yeah. hundred million on Grealish when they didn't need Grealish. They should have spent a hundred on Kane, put another fifty on top of it, and bid a hundred and fifty. They would have got. They would have got Kane, and he would have gone. I still think. I still think we'll get a hundred million pounds for him. I, I think we will for Man United. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that it'll, it'll be them or be it'll be by Munich. The, the, everyone says I Man United. He leave. He wouldn't go, mate. He wouldn't. No, he wouldn't he because of the, the goal scoring record. Yeah, because the goal scoring record. Yeah, 100%. I think regardless, I think he's gone whatever. I thought about it a lot. I thought about it a lot during the World Cup. He had time to think during the World Cup. And I was like, yeah, um, even if he wins the FA Cup, even the Champions League, his job's done at Tottenham. He's actually won the trophy at Tottenham. Fantastic. I'll move on to the next club and I'll win a league title. Um, and if he doesn't win a trophy at Tottenham, it gives him even more reason to move because he hasn't won any silverware. Anyway, you form it for me. Kane is gone this summer. I'm convinced there was a gentleman's agreement. Like with Modric and Bale, the season before they went. That's why Kane really, he was really happy coming to this season. Um, and I've, I think there's a gentleman's agreement. He's off. I'm, I'm, he I'm had convinced. that before, Tommy. He had the gentleman's agreement before. Was that, was, was that with Kane? Was that with Kane then? Yeah, yeah. It was Kane and, and apparently he had a gentleman's agreement that he could go if we didn't get in the Champions League and Levy didn't let him go. But 12 months on his contract now. That's why think... he'll go. That's why he'll That's go. That's what I'm he's saying. Just... Do you think well, Levy's going to... Not because of a gentleman's agreement, Tommy. It's of... well, I, I yeah, think that right. gentleman's agreement was him and his agent's fault. I don't think there was any... Oh, yeah. I don't think there was any figure announced. Levy said you can go. He never said a figure, you know. No. The, the figure was about 150 million. Man City tried to lowball Daniel Levy. He's like, no, you're not going to... <laughs> That's the thing go with Levy, man. Million. That's and, the thing with Levy. He said the club's worth three point five billion pounds. He hasn't said how much he'd accept. He said it's worth three point five million pounds. You know, yeah. seven. I think seven. He would like, take it, I agree so. with you, Tommy. He should have been sacking his brother as his agent as soon as that happened. Like a six-year six year contract and without a, a get-out clause when you want to be playing. Well, that shows. That's what that shows you, boys. He's a very loyal person. Maybe he might stay. Yeah, probably to his you detriment. Know? Yeah. Uh, the best yeah. chance we've got. Is if he gives us another year, if that, if he, if you know, if he gives us the last year, but I do see Daniel leave. I think he'll retire with us, though. I think if he does leave, he'll come back, not like Teddy Sheringham did, but he'll finish with us. Uh, and and Gareth Bale. And well, I hope that us. he wouldn't, mate, because that's you know we've got to move on past that. If he does go, maybe you know we don't want to be bringing back a thirty-three-year-old Harry Kane. To be he honest. Might. With you. Well, we want to be gonna... to a different level, you know. But you said it yourself, he'll drop deep because he'll lose pace, and that's the only chance we're gonna get a bloody playmaker wait until Harry Kane's 34. <laughs> He's the Eric. Don't worry, Chris. <laughs> Don't worry, Chris. We're going 4 2 3 1 next season. Emerson's gonna play Cam. <laughs> Tell you now, Emerson's gonna play Cam. A couple of Conte's uh catch up uh points here. Very few top strikers in the league this year, which proves how good Kane has been over eight years. Just imagine if he didn't need to drop deep and had everything served up on a silver platter like Harlan. Everyone says Harlan's been unbelievable. If Harry Kane was there, he'd have the service and he'd be getting 25 six goals halfway through the season. Uh, and if I was managing Kane, I'd drill him to be a fox in the box. Uh, Do you know what though? I think he enjoys. I think he enjoys that part of the game dropping back. I yeah, think he yeah. actually he thrives on that. I think yeah. he likes to do that. Sometimes you're isolated up top, aren't you? If you're, Certainly mm. if you're the only striker uh, and the game's not going, dropping deep, you're forced to kind of get involved in the game. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I, I think he probably likes that as well. Uh, but we'll start with you, Tommy, on this one. Which of the two? Uh, reports, Conte is coming back for the uh, Sheffield United game. So a Q 2-0 down at half time in every game. Uh, but who would you go with and... What do you think happens next season? I'll say now, I remember uh, when Conte got appointed, I was on your show, Tommy, saying in 18 months, Potter will be back. I don't think Conte will be there next season. I think Potter will come back. It works for Levy in the sense that Conte will go for no compensation and Potter is a free agent, comes in free agent. Uh, I'd love Potter to come back. Not now, though. If we got a new owner who was promised to... Uh, do what the manager wanted and back the manager, sign him up to a 20-year deal. He's going to be coming back if he does under Levy, who's fucked him over before, will fuck him over again. 
won't get rid of the half the players that threw him under the bus in the first place. And then it's just going to end up in the same old way. At least I'll be entertained. That's the only thing. And if it does happen, it's just going to end up one way. So I will be going and, and, and saying I was right. Thank you very much. Cause that's all I'll have to cheer about. Uh, but Conte is presumably going to be back next match. Sheffield United. Do you think he'll be there for the rest of the season and then leave? Or do you think he'll sign a, 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 a an addition, or what would you see happen happening next year? Well, he's definitely not going to be there next year, hundred yeah. percent. There's more chance of Harry Kane staying than there is Conte. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about, um, I'm glad we didn't get into the whole debate about you know Conte, Stellini. They're, they're, they're the same thing. They play the same way. Maybe there's slightly more motivation with Stellini because Conte is a fucking hard taskmaster. So the fact that he's away for a little bit might help. Well, Although team. Skip did say they want their manager back, and it's been tough. So. Yeah, they're He's playing exactly not hating the squad. And let's face it, who who do we who have we beat with Stellini Man City, who we always beat? Um, <laughs> West Ham 18th, Derby. Chelsea 10th. You know, so look, it's it's fantastic, but there's still Conte wins as far as I'm concerned because we saw him win those games last season as well, uh, in exactly the same style. Um, in terms of Poch, no, 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 never return to the scene of a crime. And I'm going, I'm, I'm, I've got the same outlook as Mark has with Kane. Move on, move on. We've moved on from Poch. You know, he's moved on. He's gone somewhere else. Um, and, and the thing with Pochettino now, he's got loads of baggage. He's got too much baggage. Um, he's had his spell at PSG that didn't go well. Uh, I know PSG sack everyone, but he was going to go in the first two or three months because he was linked with us again <laughs> the whole of that summer. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know how he held on for as long as he did at uh, PSG. And he didn't win the title in his first season, did he? No, no. no. I mean, yeah, that's... He only had half a season. He only had half a season, to be fair. But um, yeah, he didn't he didn't win the title at Lille, so he wasn't successful there. Sacked by this ownership, <laughs> you can't. It's not going to. It's going to be Kevin Keegan version two. If he comes back, it's three months, two or three months maximum. It's it's not going to work. It's just not going to. Uh, he's going to be looking over his shoulder, treading on eggshells. There, there's no way that that partnership will work. That relationship will work once again. Um, so maybe in the future, I don't. I don't even want him in the future. I think. I think we've got to move on. He's got too much baggage. We need a fresh manager, fresh ideas. Who, who do you like think Thomas we'll Frank. get? Like, who Who do like you think Thomas we'll Frank. get? For me, you have to get someone in like a Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank was what Pochettino was in 2014. No baggage, fresh ideas, plays four at the back. That's what we need. We don't need to go back. We don't need to go back. Um, and for me, this is a different situation now because the, the teams around us are much, much more competitive. Uh, than back in 2014. So it's going to be a much harder job. We lose Kane, we lose Conte, we're out of the Champions League for five years. Minimum, we're out of the Champions League for five. I don't have a problem with that because I know that's how it's going to be. I've already, you know, I've already, <laughs> I've already come to, uh, I've already come to that as, you know, that's that's how it's going to happen. We need a new project. We need to, we need to, we need to move on. Uh, and I think a new manager playing four at the back is essential, but we all know we're going to get, we're going to get Tuchel. We're going to get another ex-Chelsea manager. Is that who you think we'll get? I think, well, I think we'll go. To, we'll probably go Tuchel if he's still available. I, I actually do think we'll go Pochettino. I do think we'll go because if enough fans ask for it, he will. Um, well, he will, I, uh, give, he will give in. He will give in to the fan base. He did with. Uh, he did with the director of football. He did sacking Nuno when he when he did, which was a good decision. But Levy out chance all around the stadium forced him into it. So I, I think I think he will get Poch. To be honest, I think yeah. this is doomed, 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 doomed to fail. But. I do uh, as well under this ownership, but a, a, yeah. a different owner. It was rumoured, wasn't it? But it seems to have gone out now, so <laughs> maybe a smoke screen. But yeah, I just think Poch will come back. I think zero compensation for Levy. Also, Mark, if Conte goes because he hasn't been backed, really, uh, fans will be angry. Bring Poch in, who was loved by the majority of Spurs fans in his first spell. Another appeasement uh, manager signing, but. What do you think will happen? Who do you think we'll get? Who do you want us to get? Or do you think Conte will stay for another year or longer? I don't disagree with anything anyone has said. I think Conte will go. I think you've hit the nail on the head. It doesn't cost him anything when he goes. Pochettino's on a free. <laughs> it doesn't cost him anything to get him from a club. That, it's as simple as that. That's what's going to happen, isn't it? We all know it. We can all see it. So... Um, I absolutely love Pochettino. He's, the, he's my favourite man, all-time Spurs manager. I love the guy, but like you say, what is the point in getting him back? Because we're not going to, we don't even back an elite manager like Conte. 
Um, Pochettino isn't an elite man. I love that. I absolutely love him. What he did at Tottenham was unbelievable. I cannot believe. I can't tell you how good it was the job he did. Mm. But he's not an elite manager. He's got an elite manager now, and he's not backed him. So if you'd have asked him what I actually want to happen, I actually want either Enik to back him, which they're not going to do, or a new ownership to come in and back this this man we got now. I don't enjoy the style of football. I hold my hands up. I just want to see us win things. I don't really care anymore about the style of football. Back in the last season, we were playing good football, though. We were playing, we were playing all right. Yeah, yeah. We can do it, but I just think we're so... He's more fucking defensive because he has to be, because he has. we've got shit defenders, and he has to build everything around that, try to protect that shit defence. If we had decent defenders, we could be a bit more progressive. Um, and we got the players to be that way, but we, we haven't invested. We bought in one defender since he's been there on loan from Barcelona, and he ain't good <laughs> enough either. So we're playing David. If Pochettino comes back, we're playing Ben Davis, who was a substitute left back. We're playing Eric Dyer at centre back, who was a defensive midfielder. <laughs> and then now our, our, they're two of our starting centre backs. Well, Davis is a left wing back now. Like, what is going on? Like, I don't blame Conte at all. And as I say, I blame I think, him for some of the stubbornness. Uh, I do blame him for. I agree with that. I do agree with that as well. He is very stubborn, but we kn we know that anyway. We know he's very stubborn, and I, I I agree. I'd like to see us play four at the back at times. He isn't going to do that. But one thing I question is, why have we just brought in Pedro Porro, who's clearly <laughs> a wing back? Yeah, if we're going to get, yeah. Absolutely. If we're going to get, if yeah. Conte's going, that's one thing that doesn't make sense to me. How much are we spending? 40 odd million. Yeah, I mean, we will have Udogi back and he's tearing it up in Italy. So I think he's he'll also a wing back. Yeah, but he'll be straight in. And he is young that's at true. least. So that's he, true. He's for he Udinese, he, he's a wing back. Yeah, so, so we're bringing, you know, we've got two wing backs now. So they're not going to play a, black, uh, a back um, for. I, can't I mean, I mean, wing backs should be able to adapt. To, to, yeah. to full backs, but you've seen the size of Poro. I, I can't, yeah, no, I mean, he's... apparently, defensively, he's not. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend I know a lot about Poro because I don't, but just li listening to the experts, so called experts of the Portuguese league, and reading <laughs> the stats on him, um, supposedly he isn't a great defender, he's good going forward, he's got a great cross on him, good at free kicks, good at set pieces. Um, but I don't think he's that great defender, I don't know whether he can play in a back four. Again, I don't know. I'm not an expert, but that, from what I see, I'd be surprised if he's he can play in a back four. Yeah, it's just it's like we said about Chelsea earlier, Tommy. You, you're buying all of these players for one manager when that manager ain't going to be there for le more than a year, and then you bring a new manager in, different style of manager. I mean, we bought in Emerson, who's a fullback for Nuno. We then bring in Conte, who plays with wing backs. <laughs> Six months later, it's just. Where it's under Poch that first first time, certainly in 14, 15, 16, uh, uh, 15, 16, we were buying players in and he had uh, Paul, uh, not Paul Hitchin, uh, what's the Paul other Mitchell. guy? Paul Mitchell. Him. Paul Mitchell, who was scouting the players that uh, uh, Con uh, Poch wanted. Deli Alley fit our system under Poch like a glove. He plays in a different system with Jose, doesn't work. He's a player who fits the system. And we had players that we were buying in for an actual purpose and a reason, and they all slotted in. Fair enough, the quality wasn't quite there, but in terms of how they play, the position they played, that was. And we've gone back to just crazy house again. So this summer, I mean, Conte's ketchup asked what kind of calibre we'd, we'd buy. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea because I don't know who the bloody manager is. I don't know if we're going to be buying in wingbacks or fullbacks because I don't know which manager we're going to get in, and I don't know which manager plays with wingbacks or fullbacks. <laughs> And we're probably going to get loans in. We've got to pay for Povo. We've got to pay for Kulu. So that's two players there. Yeah. I still look. I, I, I stick I stick by what I say when I say players should be able to adapt. But they're not going to come straight in. If, you, if you're right wing back, you should be able to adapt to full back and vice versa. Uh, but in, in general, the problem there is keep changing manager. That's the problem. Yeah. How are you supposed to get a... How are you supposed to build a foundation for, for the system you're playing if you, if you change your manager all the time? It all stems from the Nuno appointment. That yeah. was that's when I sort of lost my. Um, that's when I, I I was I was angry. I was angry when he uh, sat Mourinho in a Carabao Cup final in 72 yeah. days. 
you employ a sacked Wolves manager. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, and it's all sort of spawned from that, hasn't it? Because we sacked him within two or three months and we got Conte in. And it's now... all spawned from Poch. Poch calling for a rebuild, Levy not doing it, and then throwing him under the bus rather than taking the ownership for that. And and if it had just given him, not a full rebuild, but, you know, something. But uh... we don't care about the positions of players either. The positions are not that important for Levy. It's a sell on value. If we can yeah, sell him yeah. on, then that's key. Well, why did you sign Dan Juma? What? We yeah. didn't sign Dan Juma for sell on value. It was two point five million pound initial loan fee. So we got him because he was cheap. Poro, 30, 35 million pounds. Everyone's talking about him. He's a magnificent player. Um, so it's it's about sell on value. Why did you why did you spend thirty five million pounds on Gill as a left winger when you got Son there? It's <laughs> it's incredible. It's it's based on. Um, being young enough for for a sell on fee, not not their positions, yeah. and that's why we need a director of football that's not just a puppet. Because I'm I'm convinced that every transfer, every contract signing, it goes goes through Levy. Everything is micromanaged yeah. to the to the finest of details, and 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 that's the problem. That's why Levy has to go. And this rubbish about new ownership is still going to keep Levy as chairman. Oh my! Oh, yeah, no, no, I, no, no, I don't, no, I don't no. understand that. Yeah, uh, Crazy. yeah, I, 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 yeah. I mean. That's going to be part of the deal, isn't it? So if you want to buy the club, I'm still in charge somewhere. So therefore, no one's ever going to. Yeah, I just I mean that's just crazy. But uh... imagine, imagine a doggy back four next season. A doggy and Poro, as Mark says, uh, only really played at wing back, and then you've got Romero and Dyer. Romero's ultra ultra aggressive, and Dyer, who's absolutely useless in the back. It'll be a nightmare. Back too. <sighs> where are we going to go? Where are we going and where, to go? who are our substitute left backs? Perisic and Sessignon. Perisic, exactly. Perisic will be on the I left mean, wing where we'll have I mean, Richarlison and Son exactly. as well. Gil will be back on, on off loan, so he'll be back on the left wing as well. We'll have five left wingers. This <laughs> is fucking, it's crazy, yeah. it's madness. Because I, I read Poch's book, uh, which was based on the 16-17 season, and he was saying there, this was long before he then came out and said, I'm a coach, I should change my job title, I'm not manager anymore. But he was saying there, he went to Levy, said, I want this type of player. Okay, how much do you think it will cost? X amount of money. Okay, go ahead. He then goes to Paul Mitchell and then says, I want this player. Let me know if you can get him or, or stuff like that. No, he sorry, he went to Paul Mitchell, said, I want this type of player. Paul Mitchell came back with the recommendations. He then goes to Levy, but it was all Pochettino driving it all. Levy just signed the checks. And I don't know how, when, you know, the manager gets you to regular Champions Leagues, get you into a final uh, title challenges, how 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 that's changed. You know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I guess you could say it was broke because we never won anything, but we're definitely improving. I just don't know how that's changed, how that's changed. Now we're buying just, yeah, like, like you said, Mark, with Chelsea, kids in a, a sweet shop. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but it won't change. I, I think we make Levy too much money. You know, you're not going to leave anywhere, are you, where you get a 500 grand pay rise? All we can hope is that Man United sell and whoever, if the Qataris don't get Man United, they come into us. That's my that's my hope, man, because I told you before, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care about the human rights. I, I do care about human rights. Let me just say that. <laughs> I'll put that on the one oh, minute uh, uh, for, that's for, that's for, that's for the stream. That's brother. That's it. You're but, really I see care you about anymore. human rights, but you know what? I just want to see Tottenham win things and everyone else is doing it. I've said before, like, I don't, you know, I don't care about the Qataris coming in. I, I, I welcome it. I, you know, Newcastle... If it was 10 years it, ago but, and nobody else was doing it, you can have a opinion yeah. and say, oh, human rights. You just had a World Cup in exactly. Qatar, who's, you know, who stoned gay people. Yeah, it's disgraceful. Um, I don't obviously agree with the politics. I really no, don't. Of course but not. But look at the whole golfing world. It's going to happen in the entire yeah, Formula sport. One. Cricket's they're all doing it. Boxing. Now. The boxing was in Saudi Arabia last the, the night. The cricket. The, 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 even rugby's going to. You know, they're going to. They're, they're, apparently, they're changing the Gallagher Premiership now. So it's going to happen with absolutely everything. Well, I'd welcome them um, with open arms, mate, because we need to move. We need to get rid of. So we can't, we can't stand on our pedestal. Time. We can't stand on our pedestal and say we're not going to do. No, I mean, I mean Lewis himself is, is smashed down rainforest in Argentina. No. And people forget for, for for individual airports and people forget They're about that. You don't get to, you don't become a billionaire by like, snapping a few fucking heads. Do you know what I mean? That's that's 
the nature of the business, you know. Yeah, Lewis has been awful. Lewis has yeah. been awful himself. So yeah, I mean, we forget about we forget about stuff like that. Yeah, do you know but what? Yeah. At the same time, Tommy, I'm one of them that this Iranian um, American that doesn't really excite me. It, it needs to be someone. I, I just want. I mean, I would have. How Chelsea are doing it, as all well, I was slagging it off earlier on, I just want someone that, to come in that's ambitious and to spend the money. I would take a Bowley if it, that's what he's doing. This Iranian, if it was true, he would need to come with other people around I, I him. Think, yeah, that's it. That's The, the, that's the, the, the issue with the Iranian yeah. guy was the £750 million of debt on Spurs. Yeah, so I wouldn't want that. That really worried me. No. Yeah, I agree. But he, apparently, he would just be the chair person. He would be the chairperson, a little bit like Levy. He will have backers from Abu, uh, he Abu Dhabi. Have, yeah, you have to. Uh, apparently, there are backers from Abu, Abu Dhabi and stuff like that. Mm. I'm no finance expert in the slightest, mm. but apparently, there will be backup. Because if you look at their portfolio, they've got I think it's MLS Capital or something like that. Yeah. They've got McLaren. They're in charge. Yeah. They've got McLaren yeah. and Augsburg from the Bundesliga. That's yeah. pretty much the, the biggest things they've got going on in their yeah. portfolio. So you know they'll get big backers with them. And if they if they give that, you know, if the Iranian American guy is the chair, that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, they need to come in with money around them for sure. They will. If it's if that's they're gonna quite, bid, if they're gonna bid well. four billion pounds, if they're gonna bid four million pounds, they're yeah, almost they're there to sports wash. Yeah, they're yeah, there yeah. to sports wash pretty much. So yeah, I mean that's sports what, wash. That's what we want. <laughs> cover me in oil. <laughs> cover me, cover yeah. me in oil. Pull me up, baby. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that that's for the future, but the immediate future, a huge game against Sheffield United. I think this is our biggest game of the season so far because this if you win that, gets you into the quarterfinals. You never know if you get a good draw there and uh, a couple of the biggies get drawn against each other. Really helps you out. And the FA Cup is our easily our best chance of winning something this season, Mark. Uh, how, how big a game do you think Sheffield United will be? And how do you think we'll approach it? Because I, I was delighted with the uh, uh, way we approached or how it looked like we approached Preston. Mm. No, no, no taking them for granted or anything, and then ended up winning fairly comfortably, which for me was a real, real big banana skin, potential banana skin. So how big a game do you think Sheffield United is? And do you think we'll approach it in the same way and do a professional job? Or do you well, think it is a banana skin? I'm going to the game. So <laughs> I can... God, you sound um, absolutely delighted with that. Yeah, I, no, I, I am. I, I'm, I, go, I'm going to the game. I'm going to... I've got to drive, mate. Um, <laughs> uh, for me, it's the biggest game of the season. Mm. For me, it's the biggest game of the season, mate. I want to win the so FA Cup. I, I want to win the FA Cup. For as long as you, you've known me, Chris, I've been saying I want to win a cup. I'm not bothered about... No. I am bothered about the top four. But for me, I want to win trophies. I'm in this game to win trophies. I'm lucky enough that I've been to, I think, six finals with Tottenham. We won two of them, yeah? And the best days I've had as a Tottenham fan were them finals. Like, going back to Tottenham after winning the um, League Cup against Chelsea, going into the pubs in Tottenham with my mates and getting hammered. You know, you know what I mean? That was, that's the best day I've had as a Tottenham fan. Not The top four the first time was great when we beat Man City, but it don't beat winning the Cup. And I, I was like, as I say, I'm 41. I was 10 the last time we won the FA Cup. And I barely remember it. I barely remember the last time we won the FA Cup. It didn't mean anything to me back then. Um, so for me, it's the biggest game of the season, mate. Um, is it a banana skin? Yes. These are the kind of games in the past we've fucked up. So Sheffield United playing well and doing well. So... They're going to be bang up for it. You're on mute, mate. Yeah, I am actually. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, hopefully they've got one eye because they are doing well. Hopefully they've got one eye on getting promoted and then take their focus off the FA Cup. But even then, even then, wins, confidence is created by wins. So they, they're they trying to go for promotion. They want to win this because that's another win. They don't want a, a defeat. But yeah, I'm with you. Just take this super, super seriously. Because you never know, you know, I don't know who's left in it, but you could all, always have, you know, we get a favourable draw at home and the then two, Man the United two, versus Man City. I don't know if they're it, in it, it. But, but, you know, there's some good that, teams that's left one in. team out. There's, two, there's some good teams left in, but the two that you fear are Man City and Man United. We already said we always seem to beat Man City. I wouldn't want to face them, don't get me wrong. But I think Brighton may be still in it. There are some decent teams still mm -hmm. left in, but 
I you think know. if you look at that last sixteen, I've never seen a easy, I've never seen a better draw of a lot of Grimsby are in it. You got mm. some, you know, what I mean, there's a, there's, Leeds, some, there's some small yeah. teams. It, it favors us, but oh no, oh, look, I'm not going to be picky. Of course, I want to win the FA Cup, but for me, the prestige of a trophy is who you beat along the way. So I want to take some big boys out as well. Yeah. So, I don't so, care about that. If we won, if we won every round with a Leeds true, team, mate. we've still got a trophy there in the trophy cabinet. I couldn't care less. No, but it don't for matter. Me, but for, no, look, at this stage, yeah. But if I had a choice, I want to. A prestige of anything is to is to for it to be a challenge. For me, that's the prestige. It's, right. it's a challenge. Yeah, if it's, you it's see, no one's it's looking prestige. at Man United's run. No one's looking at Man United's run of winning the League Cup well, yesterday. Well, Trust Martin, me. Martin Keown is. He's not happy with it. Oh, he's a fucking idiot. Though. <laughs> he really not go there. <laughs> we can't. We can't be picky. We can't be picky. But for me, it's about football. Is about beating the best. And you know, Ports, Portsmouth, Preston, Sheffield United. It's been pretty easy so far. We should beat Sheffield United. It's a way as well. So you're going Sheffield, Mark. You're going all the way up Sheffield. Yes. Yeah. Man, that's a... Well, I'm really excited about it. No, Sheffield. <laughs> <is great. laughs> Sheff... <laughs> Sheff... Sheffield boys are great. I thought it was, for some reason, I thought it was it, it's Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday. 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 Yeah, it is Wednesday. So um, of course, and, and we will. We will get one of the big boys. I'd love to beat Man City. It, like if we get Man City in the quarters, take them out. And that's a proper cup for me. If you if you beat the big boys along the way. That's uh, and I'm sure we will. We're going to get one of them. Um, uh, but but so far it's, it's it's been fantastic. We've got a good draw, uh, and we're no, never going to have a better opportunity. Absolutely yeah. no chance. We are never going to have a better opportunity, and we we need to get something in there because you know 20, 23 years, one trophy. I think was it fifteen years since Carabao Cup. Um, I don't even sort of class Carabao Cup as a major trophy. So as Mark said back in the day when you were one years old and I was uh, no you were ten years old. I was one. I'm 30, 33, so I was like one. Um, it's, it's too long ago, nobody remembers that. So, we need uh, we, and, and FA Cup is a major trophy. We're not out of the Champions League yet, you know. We're not out of the Champions I mean, League. I mean, I mean, the Champions League at home, AC Milan aren't great, it's only one nil. That's easily get that. No yeah. away goal. So, if we win 2 1, it's extra time. Whereas last season, you're out on away goals. Uh, there's something about Champions League and away goals, certainly it's places like oh, where was it? And uh, a lot the of the Etihad, big teams, the Etihad, the Etihad, that's it. Uh, and a lot of the big clubs are playing each other, which is fantastic. That's yeah. what you want. Big club playing a big club because it takes one of the big clubs out. Small club, small club, and you want yeah. a smaller club next. So well, I think we can beat out. AC Milan. That's a week on Wednesday, isn't it? Not this Wednesday, Ooh. the week uh, after. And then, uh, obviously, Sheffield United and Wolves in between those. But, yeah, the FA Cup, it would just be... I remember, you know, back as a kid, the whole day, you know, from 11, 10 o'clock up until, I don't know, when did it finish? 5 o'clock. It was just FA Cup on TV. It's obviously lost that now because it's only it's it's just like a normal Premiership game now. But yeah, I love the FA Cup and it'd be amazing to win that again. We won it, you know, when we won it in '91, we'd won it the most eight times. Yeah, we won yeah. it more than anyone. Arsenal yeah. have overtaken us now. Man United have overtaken us. I think Chelsea are on the same. I think Chelsea won Liver it eight Liverpool times would well. have overtaken us. Sort of thought. I don't think Liverpool have. No, well, I don't think not. Liverpool have. They they may be on the same, but. I right. think Chelsea. Uh, I think Chelsea are, are eight as well. But you know, we were the we were the we were the cup team back in the yeah. day. And now we're the fucking bottle jobs, apparently that never win cups. Um, yeah. You know, so we need to. Yeah, win, I mean, win, win we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Make sure you turn up professionally for Sheffield United. Don't, oh, don't listen, take mate. any liberties, and then hope you can get a good draw. No. Hope and you know, Conte will go strong. Conte will ne- Conte. He has to, strong. I think, because it's it's. He, he did in the, the third round of the Carabao Cup. The league is going to be very tricky. He did so against Tottenham is... Forest when we went out in the Carabao Cup third round. We played our best team. We lost, but we played yeah, our best team. Yeah. So, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, he's putting the strongest team available out there. If he's yeah. there, and, he must and, leave. Yeah. And I, I was very impressed with a Preston game. Just not, not because we beat Preston. We should be beating Preston. But the attitude. I, I never thought Preston didn't really look like scoring West. You know, the Middlesbrough game last season, Forest game earlier in the season. Oh, we, we're in trouble here. That's why I'm not getting ahead of myself, and, and, mate. We yeah, could easily and, lose. Wednesday, we could easily fuck that yeah. up. Very yeah. easily. So make sure you have the correct attitude and then hope and then that will stay. Because that's half the battle in these giant killing games and banana skins. Half the battle is turning up in the correct attitude and then the second part is actually performing on the pitch. But if, if you go, go in thinking we've won this because they're in a lower division and they start off well... Very difficult to turn that round. Very difficult to turn that round. Uh, but yeah, 
I'd love an FA Cup. I'd love anything. I was delighted with the Audi Cup because I was a star for so long. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, pretty much reached the end. Uh, brilliant result against Chelsea. Long time coming as well. And hopefully that can stand us in good stead for the top four. And then we can have a real, real charge for this FA Cup and turn around the uh, Champions League. Thanks again to everybody involved in the comments and watching. Please hit the like and subscribe before you go. Notification bell as well. Jump over to Chris's Magic as well. It's my other kind of side hustle channel. Magic trick every week, 7.30 p.m. UK time. And then you go on to the description and the Hotspur Hood. Tommy, uh, that's your show. Been, uh, I've been invited on tomorrow, uh, which is fantastic. I haven't been on for a while, but what can people expect? I know you're doing shorts now as well as your, your normal videos. Yeah, I just started doing. Yeah, I've started doing a few shorts. I'm only going to my Tuesday night stream tomorrow is like going to be my only stream of guests from here on in. I'm just going to do that's going to be my guest stream. I'm going to do one live solo stream a week, either Thursday and Friday, and just try and yeah do a few shorts before a run or after a run. Just get a after a run's better because you get those endorphins released. You're in a bit of a high, so hopefully <laughs> uh, Thursday morning I'll go for a little run, and uh, I've got only good things to say like if you get through. Against Sheffield United, I'm sure that'd be fantastic. <laughs> so, um, yeah, tomorrow night's the next stream. Hotspur Hood. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, that'd be great if you could head over there and subscribe, but not before you subscribe to uh, Chris here. Both both Chris's channels. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot with Chris over the years, so make sure you subscribe, yeah. hit the like as well. A lot of people forget to hit the like, but it really does, really does uh, make a difference and help the channel. Yeah, cheers. So, yeah, make sure you tune in tomorrow at nine o'clock. Uh, Hotspur Hood and Mark, uh, Matt, I know you have uh, of emotion podcast but mac was on here a couple of weeks ago and uh, <laughs> said it's basically died a death so uh yeah i see mac i see mac on the twitter he retweeted yeah. which means he's pissed off he's not on so oh, uh, uh, that's, that's not that's not unusual for him being pissed off about something yeah so uh, uh, yeah to be I, honest, I know mate, you appear on channels all over the place so uh, uh to be yeah, fair i don't i don't too much i don't too much anymore but um it's busy isn't it that's what it is it's like he goes to all the games um i'm going to Sheffield United, then Wolves, and then AC. So the way we did it, it's not. It, it didn't work because we were speaking bef just before the game, half time, and all that. So it doesn't work. We're still mates. Um, he's still a twat. Um, it's all good. He speaks very highly of you as well. I bet he does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make sure. Yeah, you you. you... Hit like, subscribe, notification bell here. Chris's magic as well, and Hotspur Hood. Make sure you tune in at nine o'clock tomorrow on the Hotspur Hood. I'll be back on uh, uh, Friday, <sighs> reviewing the Sheffield United game. Looking forward to the Wolves game. Hopefully, it's a happy stream and not just a depressing one where we're out of another cup. Uh, but yeah, and uh, <laughs> God, just got back go from the points. store. Has to go back to the twenty seventh minute to catch the rest of the show. That's the beauty of YouTube. You never miss it. But you can watch it all again and again and again or watch from where you left off. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the comments coming in. Make sure you go over to Hotspur Hood tomorrow and then check all of the channels out. Follow Mark and Tommy as well on Who, Twitter. The Courtney's Ketchup, I've banned two people forever on my show. So you must have changed your avatar. And you, when I ban people, it's because somebody puts in a private chat, ban them because they're talking shit. So, who who are you? I don't know who you are. You have to tell me your <laughs> previous avatar. It's not that it's dodgy one we used to get, Tommy, is it? Huh? It's not that dodgy bloke we used to get. Tea, what, tea bag. That was Gareth. I'm still convinced that was Gareth. Do you know what <laughs> the problem with Gareth was? Do you know the problem with Gareth was? I used to get super chat. So, I used to get £10 super chat every week from his Samantha Collins, who definitely wasn't a female. Yeah. And he called her out on being oh, not yeah. a female. He called her out on not being a female. I haven't seen her ever since. So, Gareth <laughs> fucked me over big time. Uh, on a few things. A surprise. Uh, don't worry. He, he hasn't got anything nice to say about anyone. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Conte's Ketchup is always in the chat here. Uh, appreciate that. And everyone who's got involved in the comments. Like I said, like, subscribe, notification bell. Same on the Hotspur Hood. Catch us on Friday, 12.30 p.m. Hopefully, hopefully, dreaming about the FA Cup quarterfinal and beyond, uh, as well as... Uh, uh, the uh, uh Harry, Harry Payne was his avatar. Not sure who that is. Uh, but yeah, back on Friday, talking about the Sheffield United game and the Wolves game. Let's hope we can get through to the next round of the cup. So we'll see you on uh Friday. Till then, as always, keep.
Come on, you Spurs. Come on, Tottenham. Thanks so much for watching, for everybody who joined in the live chat and added comments. Before you go, please leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, please hit that notification bell. That will give you a notification every time we're about to go live, and it's all completely free. For those who missed the live show, you can catch this whenever you want on Let's Talk Tottenham's YouTube channel. Please also hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And everybody, please leave feedback, comments, suggestions in the comments section on the YouTube videos. For those of you who listen to the audio podcast, thank you so much for listening. Anyone who wants that audio podcast, you can pick that up wherever you get your podcast from. We're back Mondays, 7.30 p.m. UK time, and Fridays, 12.30 p.m. UK time. Alternatively, if you go to Twitter, at Tottenham, or Instagram, Let's Talk Tottenham Podcast, you can find all the information there. Anyone who wants something a little bit different, also do a magic show. So I do one trick a week, which drops Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. UK time. Chris's Magic on YouTube is where you'll find that. But in the meantime, come on, you Spurs.